Welcome, welcome, welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. The landscape at the nanoscale is just as complex as the one we're all familiar with, with some of the same physical rules at play. But in many ways, it's another dimension entirely. At the nanoscale, color ceases to have any meaning. Gravity is dwarfed by chemical forces and static electricity. Surface chemical reactions, too small and subtle for even the smallest animal or even bacteria to notice, are the weather, the hurricanes and lightning storms you experience. If you were a few nanometers tall, surfaces of materials would appear like violent oceans in a state of rearrangement, torment, and chaos. Many microorganisms are destroyed nearly instantly by the thermodynamically wild environment at a material's surface. Interfaces at the nanoscale are extremely violent and unpredictable. Surfaces, which appear smooth to the human eye, when you image them with a microscope, can look like the rugged Andes from an airplane, covered in peaks, hills, and valleys, scarred and riddled with debris from contact with and contamination from the environment. Skin cells become as high as the Himalayas, and faint surface scratches are giant chasms of cosmic proportions. Even the polished surfaces of things we consider inert, diamonds and platinum, are alive with chemical reactions, living things, mountains and canyons of rough patches and fine scratches. Telescopes show you the scale of the stars and galaxies. Optical microscopes can show you the world of microbes and cells. Scanning and transmission electron microscopy with thousands of times higher magnification power or resolution transport you to the interior of viruses and cell components, give you the power to actually see the hidden structure of nature, the most fundamental chemical and physical effects right at work. But what if you want to look even deeper, to see individual atoms themselves, to observe what a molecule actually looks like Instead of relying on indirect, spectroscopic methods, to actually see a carbon atom sitting on a surface, or get a photograph of what a carbon-carbon bond actually looks like. To image the subatomic, it takes something very different than a conventional microscope. At the atomic scale, light itself ceases to have the same meaning. The light wave itself is hundreds of nanometers in length too big to interact with something only a few nanometers tall. To see at the atomic or subatomic scale, light just isn't going to be of any help. In order to see with the highest magnification or resolution possible, the atomic force microscope took a lesson from the blind. At such small scales, the AFM had to see things in a different way. Instead of using reflected and scattered light or electrons to get a picture, the AFM relies on touch or tactile feedback to see. Just like a record player, an extremely sharp tip is glided across the surface and changes in height are measured carefully by a laser. So as the AFM tip moves across the surface, it feels for the slightest bump or indentation. Using the scanning probe technique in microscopy has allowed for image resolution beyond imagination or fetched right out of the imagination. This is from an article in Science from 2009 called The Chemical Structure of a Molecule Resolved by Atomic Force Microscopy by Leo Gross and Gerhard Meyer from IBM Zurich. This is a five-ringed pentacene molecule. In the top left, you can see a computer-generated schematic of how chemists always envisioned the molecule in their imaginations. Before anyone could get close to seeing pentacene, this is what chemists always thought it would look like. In the top right, you can see what the atomic force micrograph looked like before it was fully focused. Now on the bottom left, the AFM image shows you exactly what the molecule feels like. The microscope touched its way along the surface and felt the bumps and bridges of the carbon atoms and bonds. It turns out that pentacene and other molecules look just like how scientists imagined. It's pretty amazing. In the bottom right, you can see a cluster of pentacene molecules. The AFM has shown us that the stick and ball atomic models weren't so far off. In fact, they were exactly right. Here is an AFM image of a glob of a polymer called polytheocene. 
Notice how the polymer chains weave themselves into those ribbons. Zoomed in at the top right is an image of the molecular rings themselves, self-assembled into an organized array. This is from an article in Nature Communications from 2019 by Vladimir Korolkov called Ultra-High Resolution Imaging of Thin Films and Single Strands of Polytheophene Using Atomic Force Microscopy. AFMs are seeing a lot more use in biology and medicine to look at cell structures and even observe the function of living organisms. Cell membranes contain complex proteins that function in different ways, including signaling, ion pumping, energy conversion, molecular transport, and cell reproduction. These proteins are more like molecular machines than just chemicals. The AFM has unlocked the hidden intricate world of this cell biochemistry. This is from Reports on the Progress of Physics from 2011 by Daniel Muller and Christian Bips, called High Resolution Atomic Force Microscopy and Spectroscopy of Native Membrane Proteins. Just look at the structure at work. AFMs have taught scientists how to see beyond what was possible with light, to image something in a totally different way. They've proven that human imagination and intuition has been staggeringly successful in predicting how these tiny things are actually constructed. If you were only a few nanometers tall, life would look a lot different. The world around would appear dark because a wave of light is actually too big to notice. The entire land would be charged like a live wire. The sky would be a wild eruption of light and chaos. You would be inundated with debris like raining comets of dust and rain. A mist, to us, would be a biblical torrent to someone at the nanoscale. If science and technology continue to push forward and offer even greater magnification in our microscopes, I wonder if, one day, scientists might stare down through the lens and discover someone else peering back. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.